I feel like Conway the Machine is easily one of the most underrated lyricists in rap right now. It's for a couple of reasons. If you look at the way that this guy's been putting out projects for the past couple of years, the consistency within those track lists, you know, his skills and the ability to, you know, do storytelling cuts or the way that he structures his rhymes, his impact goes beyond the underground scene, in my opinion, because no one's putting out volume like him or Griselda as a whole and, you know, delivering these quality projects on a yearly basis. So today we're going to have some fun, guys. We're going to be going through God Don't Make Mistakes. This is his second studio album and his debut for Shady Records. So, Lou, let's go through this. And by the way, guys, we're actually going to be giving our end result at the end of this video. So stay through this whole video with us. But what was the first, you know, noticeable change from La Machina to God Don't Make Mistakes Listen, for you? I had a lot of hype going into this album just because, like you said, it's his Shady Records debut. So... He's been working on this for a couple of years because the label kept pushing it back. So you can tell that he took his time to craft something really special here. And the major takeaway for me here is that you're getting some of Conway's deepest cuts. Facts. I think it's his most personal album up to this point. And what's really interesting is that you get to see more of Conway's duality in terms of what he offers his listeners in the sense that you're getting those grimy cuts on songs like John Woo Flick or Tear Gas where he's taking you through those cold Buffalo streets and all the violence and all the, I would say, that bravado that he actually had to um, embody during those times when he was selling you know, drugs in the streets. And then he gives you the flip side where he takes you through all the stress, all the anxiety that comes with living that life and also now being in the limelight. And um, the way that he turns, for example, his near-death experience into poetry on songs like Stressed or God Don't Make Mistakes, it's phenomenal. The writing is just, it's Conway's best in my opinion. And I've never seen him rap on such slower tempo production atmospheric and, productions like that too yeah and that was what was impressive to me is that you know usually when you go into a conway album you expect it to be really gritty and really grimy but you got that and i'm not gonna lie to you and you got that on songs like john woo flick you got that on drum work and you know those were prominent songs that you might have found on his um older albums but you know if you're looking at you know um songs like stressed or chanel paris like these are completely different productions that he's never gone on before yeah. and i feel as if that's where the diversity really stems from for me on this album and, and as a fan of Conway I enjoyed that because you know I, I don't I didn't want like you know let's say another like Lulu or I didn't want let's say another La Machina I didn't want that I really wanted to see how he was going to be able to upgrade his pen game while being able to ride diverse productions and you got a hit boy beat on Stressed you know you got an atmospheric production on Chanel Paris you'll also get a beautiful production from Justice League that has these beautiful vocal samples that are pitched up um, on a song I believe it was called hold on a second Second. Wait a second. Is that the highlight of the album for you thing? Like the actual production? Yeah, I think it is. Wait, I believe it was on. I'm so sorry. I, I had it in my notes over here. I believe it was on... Hold on a second. I have it on my notes right here. I think it was so much more. Yes, it was so much more. That you, you just you're gonna see him being able to extend his pen game, being able to be more diverse and really understand where his talents lie. And I love what you said about the content because this album is raw, it's genuine, and it's vulnerable. You know, this is something that I never saw from Conway in his discography, and I feel as if now this was a good place for him to dive into because on a song like Stressed, you'll hear Kanye talking about his drinking problem, you'll hear talking about his depression, and then how that process came to be for him so example i believe this was on the first verse um life is about trials and tribulations and overcoming obstacles but i'm tired of uh, i'm tired of shit i'm facing so you could hear the fatigue in his voice and how you know this impact of the music career has had on his life so was that the standout for you throughout the writing yeah it was definitely i think that's the standout out of the, of the whole album is like more than getting those usual you know hard-hitting punch lines and wordplay and double entendres which are more present, I would say, in projects like From King to a God or La Machina. Here, the focus was more kind of him just telling us his story and giving us that concept of God don't make mistakes, the way that he feels like every event that, that's occurred in his life is destiny. It's kind of for a good reason, for the better purpose of his future. And um, it's something that he goes through in depth on a lot of these tracks. And um, Guilty is a really nice cut for me because he's kind of going through what it was like being in intensive care and like just giving us details on what it felt like to be so close to death. And that's something mm -hmm. that he's brought through previously in his discography, but he always finds a different way to tackle it. There's the always, imagery on this song was beautiful. Yeah, there's bro. always different emotions for him to go into this story that has forever changed his life because that's something else that he raps about. He's like, people always talk about my appearance and what my face looks like, but 
fuck all that. If you're a true fan of mine, you're going in for the bars. You're going that's in facts. for everything that I bring as an MC. And that's what I appreciated the most. But let's get into some of the features now because it was a pretty stacked feature list. You had Lil Wayne. You had Rick Ross. You had T.I. Novel. You also had some artists that are part of his label drum work, such as Jay Skies and Seven Vex the Genius. So... Who was the best feature and what are some features that you think maybe weren't necessary? To oh, the track? okay. So um, let's actually go through this. So I, I think probably one of my favorite features on this was actually Jill Scott on um, Chanel Pearls. Um, that was fantastic. Also Keisha Plum on um, Babas. That was absolutely amazing too. Uh, but my favorite, I think, was actually Rick Ross on the end of Tear Gas. Like that production was absolutely meant for, like meant for him. And I think that when I was looking at Lil Wayne's feature, I liked it, but it wasn't a bash money situation. No. You know, like it wasn't at all, but it was still still really solid um but overall what are your favorite features and i'm gonna ask you that same question one that wasn't needed i yeah. think the one i didn't necessarily need was maybe maybe ti i think maybe ti on wild chapters i feel as if novel could have just taken off the whole song with him but how about you yeah top three features i would say. say rick ross is definitely up there and it's surprising that he actually like he got the best out of lil wayne for me in that in my opinion it's mostly because if you look at that production it's more like soul based and there's a luxurious feel to it. So Rick Ross was able to ride that much better, in my opinion. And Lil Wayne lyrically on this song wasn't his best effort. You have lines like binge watch, fuck her on Zoom and let her friends watch. Like, I mean, I've gotten way better punch lines on his recent feature game than I did on this song. Um, Beanie Siegel on Lock Load, the intro was phenomenal. That He's was kind really of nice. giving you this suspenseful delivery. is kind grimy. of whispering. So I appreciated that a lot. And um, Seven Vex the Genius, she was kind of rapping off beat on drum work and wasn't the biggest fan of that. And like you said, I don't think T.I. or Novel were necessary on Wild Chapters because... That's such a descriptive song. Conway's telling you how he's like stopped at a light and how he's just reflecting and thinking about all the trials and tribulations of his life. And he was able to carry that out on his own. He didn't need any help on that song. Um, apart from that, we got to talk about John Wooflick, bro. Every time the three OG Griselda boys link up, you know you're getting an onslaught of lyrical bars. And I mean, to be honest with you, Benny the Butcher killed it. I love what he was talking about, just going through holding people ransom and... Um, then you had West Side Gun, who was literally describing in detail how he was going to take out his opponent. So that's that classic, grimy, violent Griselda sound yeah. that you'd want out of an album like this. So they really delivered on that one. For yeah, sure. and this goes up with me for like the war paints of their posse cuts. I think that this was really a, a great collaboration between all of them. And I think that the feature list was actually pretty strong, though. I think that it added a lot to the track list. And for 12 tracks, I feel as if... It is crowded, but still, it does add a lot of, I would say, flavor to, you know, your overall listening experience. Because, you know, example, like you were saying, on John Woo Flick, that posse cut was fantastic with the OG Griselda boys. You know, Rick Ross on this track list really fit the vibe of it. Um, I like the novel um, feature. The TI feature for me was acceptable. I en I enjoyed it, but I don't think it was necessarily needed. But I also want to talk about The Alchemist because he did make an appearance on this track list. And um, he was actually, I believe, on piano and God Don't Make Mistakes. And listen, the piano keys on both of those productions make you transcend, bro. Those are some of the best productions I have ever heard on a Conway album. And would you like to see, let's say, a full-blown Conway album exclusively produced by Derringer and the alchemist because i feel as if when i look at maybe this track list um well you i think you had bink on here you had hit boy i um, mean had derringer you had you had a couple um, other producers you had a couple too. of other producers as well but i think the two that did the best for me were derringer and the alchemist so yeah because they just they know they that know griselda that sound Griselda's that aesthetic yeah. they get it perfectly and we saw that with lulu which was executively produced by the alchemist who did every beat on that ep so that would definitely be dope but my favorite beat on this project would have to have to be um guilty because bink produced it you have beautiful chord progression you have a nice soul sample there and um that was really nice and you also get a, a lot of nice like old sounding electric guitar strings and a lot of these beats and that was a nice touch to give this vintage feel to the soundtrack and apart from that i just i love that the overall vibe is like this haunting boom bap where you get these drum patterns of the kicks and the snares and everything was just really um meticulously detailed i would say and Conway knows how to have good beat, beat selection because all of his projects have it. And overall, I mean, it was a really solid project. I think that Conway really stepped up in terms of maturing and in terms of giving us his most introspective tracks that he's ever put out. So I'm feeling really strongly on this. And 
Will it be the best result of release of the year? I don't know. Tana Talk 4 is coming, bro. Tana that Talk shit's going to be crazy. Tana Talk 4 is coming. I don't know. And this is what's inci- exciting about Griselda because he's not signed to Griselda anymore, but he is like he is an OG founder and like he is a part of that whole collective. But as far as the Griselda boys, I do think that this will be a very strong case for even an album of the year contender. I feel as if this is Ooh, one of the best. That's strong? Hi- this is one of the best hip-hop releases I've heard all year. It's not better than Few Good Things. I don't think that right now. That's but why it doesn't even compete with it yet for me. So that's why it's like already I don't I see it being to- that album of the year contender. But the thing is, is that the thing with Conway albums... I feel as if it takes more and more time for me to listen to it. And then when I do my end of the year list, I always have to... Because the same thing happened with La Machina. You know, I was doing my end of the year list last year and I was like man, this, this is actually in contention and it dropped earlier in the year. So it's going to be interesting to see the way that this project ages. So what are you taking out of this album? Because there's a lot of tracks on it, 12, and you know you could probably go through every single one of these and there's not a single skip. Yeah. So what's the vibe for you? Is this going to be more of like a pluck and play or are you going to go from start to finish? How do you want to treat this album? It's going to take more listens, but I definitely seeing it being a start to finish album because he's giving you a story on this project. He's taking you through... Um, his come up story, he's taking you through all the, the hardships he's had to deal with and how he's become stronger from experiencing those. And I love it because of, again, how meditative, how self-reflective it is. And I mean, listen, to be honest with you, this is not my favorite type of Conway. As much as I love those deep cuts, I prefer when I'm getting that action packed, more grimy in the streets type of Conway. Like because Lemon. Yeah, because I feel like that's where he really strives. But This album gives me a bit of both because I get those songs like Tear Gas or John Woo Flick or Drum Work where he's more aggressive and he's giving you um, more of that gory kind of sound. But I also get more sincere songs from Conway on tracks like Guilty or So Much More, Stressed, which I absolutely love and where he gives you some of his best hooks and some of his most heartfelt songwriting. So... To be honest with you, I just love the fact that he sounds hungry. He always has that drive to be in that conversation of the best lyricist in the game. And he makes a case on this album. I don't think that um, it's going to be an album of the year contender. I think that um, the subject matter could have been slightly diversified at times. But I do appreciate the type of story that he was trying to tell. And I feel like this is the album from Call Me the Machine that has the most purpose in terms of him just being authentic and genuine with the listeners. Uh, I so that's, agree how, that's where I'm at. Um, I think the diversity in the content did enough for me here because I didn't want an album full of John Woo flicks or drum works. I like those um, breaks where he had gotten on Stressed or Chanel Paris or Guilty where you know he was going more in depth and that it was really him pouring out his soul into these tracks. And that's what I get out of this track list is passion, vulnerability. And that's hard for a rapper like Conway to do because he's always sold this very street thuggish sort of um, personality that his fan base has come to love. So to see him him kind of flip that now and seeing the after effects of it was super cool for me because listen if i want some of his grimy as shit i could go into his earlier catalog and go get that but i think where this album is going to strive and replay value is i won't get songs like guilty or stressed or you know let's say chanel paris there's I'm, a couple I'm, in his catalog that there's are a like couple that. but not in a not, not in the context yeah. of an album or a storyline that's what's so nice about this album too is that Throughout the whole track list, I feel as if he's always giving you that double-edged sword of, okay, this is what I've built my career off of, and this is why I'm a founding member of Griselda, but these are the effects that come with that and, you know, making this persona come to life. So, I think overall, when I look at the track list, it was a great listen. That's going to be our official rating. I think it was a great album. It was great. And, And when you look at the overall replay value of it, there's so much to go through here, and especially when you have to pay attention to Conway's writing. I feel as if it's less focused on the punchlines and it's more focused on the imagery and storytelling and through him giving you these personal experiences and anecdotes. So that's my take on it. I was a big fan of the album and hopefully it ends up creeping into my top 10. But yeah. give me your final verdict. Man. Yeah, it's got to be a great rating. Like I said, I think it's Conway's most sincere and personal album. And it's a nice change of pace for what we usually get from a Conway the Machine record. But let us know how you guys feel about it in the comments section. Is it great? Is it amazing? perfect let us know in the comments section and thank you guys so much for watching we'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching the full video and if you're new to nfr be sure to hit that subscribe button as we'll be keeping you guys updated with the latest album releases in terms of update videos album reviews and our own original series on the weekly and we also have our patreon plan available in the description below where you can access weekly bonus content and also access to our discord so be sure to check out all of that and we'll catch you in the next one